Hi folks, this is Shifik. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to focus on vector similarity search with exact nearest neighbor algorithm in SQL based relational databases. But before we begin, please like the video and do not forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest videos. Also, your comments are more than welcome. Thank you for your all support in advance. Even though we are going to use SQL light in our experiments, this can be adapted into any relational SQL based database such as MSQL, Oracle or DB2. Herein Postgres is classified different than other relational databases because Postgres has a embedding data type for vector embeddings. On the other hand, in other SQL based relational databases, you have to apply something different. Also, as a use case, we are going to use DeepFace library to represent facial images as vector embeddings, but you can use this approach into any vector based problem such as NLP or image classification. In command prompt, I go to the desktop. Thereafter, I'm going to call SQLite tree command to create my database. And as an argument, I'm going to give the name, let's say, facial database.tv. This is going to create the database in my desktop. In this PowerShell, you are able to perform any SQL related commands. For instance, in this experiment, I'm going to need two different tables. First one is going to be identities. I'm going to create it as create identities. Thereafter, I'm going to specify its fields. First field is going to be ID and its type is going to be integer and this is going to be primary key, primary blank key. Second field is going to be image name and its type is going to be varchar, let's say 100. And finally, the last column is going to be embedding and its type is going to be blob. First table identities is created and my second table is going to be embeddings. I'm going to create it as create table embeddings and let's specify its fields. First column is going to be face ID and it's going to be foreign key coming from the ID field of identities. Its type is going to be integer. Second field is going to be dimension number. This is going to be integer as well. And we are going to store the order of a dimension. I mean, for instance, FaceNet model generates 128 dimensional vector embeddings. So we are going to insert 128 different records into embedding table. So we are going to mention each dimension order in this field. And last field is going to be wheel. And its type is going to be decimal. It will have five digits and specify its precision as 30. Now I'm going to switch to my Jupyter Notebook and as a first task, I'm going to read the unit test items of the face library. That's why I'm going to import built-in operating system module first. And secondly, operating system module has walk function, walk command. And here I'm going to specify the path of the unit test items, the face tests, and data set. And let's check what the vault function is going to return. It's returning directory path, directory names, and file names. So I'm going to build a for loop. Thereafter, file names is a list. That's why I'm going to build another for loop here for file name in file names. And finally, image path is going to be directory path. And after file name, let's print this first. As you can see, all files under dataset folder is listed here, but some non-image files available here. That's why I'm going to check something. If .jpg extension is not available in image path, not in image path, then I'm going to skip to next iteration. Now I have all image files here. Once I have the exact image paths, I'm able to represent those facial images as vector embeddings. That's why I'm going to import the face library from the face, import the face. And here I'm going to call faces represent function. And it has image path argument and I have image path already. Secondly, even though it's an optional argument, I'm going to set the model name as 
paste that for this experiment and represent function is returning a list you can check it here it's returning a list then i'm going to build another for loop for object and objects and let's remember what represent function is going to return it's returning embedding as a k so i need to access embedding k of the current object this is going to be my embedding and also i have the image path at this point now i'm going to store image path and embedding pair that's why before this for loop i'm going to initialize the instances variable and it's going to be empty list and here i'm going to append image path and embedding pair to instances all unit test items are represented as vector embeddings. I'm able to check the length of the instances here. There are 68 different vector embeddings. And let's check the first item of the instances to understand its data. For example, image 22.jpx vector embedding is here. If I access its one index value, I'm going to get the vector embeddings. And if I check its length, it should be 128 because FaceNet model, we use FaceNet model here. This model generates 128 dimensional vector embeddings. Now I can insert all those vector embeddings into my SQLite database. That's why here I'm going to import built-in SQLite dependency, sorry, SQLite tree. Thereafter, I'm going to initialize my database. We are going to connect to our SQLite database. Connection is going to be SQLite.connect and here i'm going to set the location of my database it should be in the current directory that's why i'm going to use facialdb.db here thereafter i'm going to initialize my cursor cursor is going to be connection.cursor now i'm able to perform my statements with this cursor here i'm going to build a for loop for instance instances and for each instance i'm going to insert a record to my identities table insert into name of my table is going to be identities thereafter i'm going to set the fields one by one which are id image name and embedding id image name finally embedding and we are going to set its values as arguments that's why i'm going to use question mark here i'm going to set these arguments in insert identity arguments this is going to be tuple firstly id is going to be i don't have any id related thing that's why i'm going to enumerate instances here thereafter this is going to return id of each iteration and i'm going to use this iteration id as first argument second argument is going to be image name and i have it as instances first item remember we were using image path as first argument of instances and finally second argument of instance is going to be vector embeddings but this was list i'm going to convert it to bytes because data type was block that's why i'm going to use two bytes command here once statement and arguments are ready i'm going to call cursor.execute and send statement and arguments as its inputs once identity record is created i'm going to create records for vector embeddings that's why here i'm going to set this to embedding variable let's set this to image name embeddings here i'm going to build another for loop for embedding in embeddings and similarly i'm going to use enumerate here I use id y for its index value similar to identity insert approach i'm going to use insert embedding statement and my statement is going to be insert into name of the table was embedding and these are the fields face id dimension number face underscore id dimension number and last field was value and i'm going to pass arguments instead of them secondly insert embedding arguments are going to be face id is going to be id x dimension number is going to be id y finally value is going to be embedding now i'm going to execute the statement cursor.execute and i'm going to set insert embedding statement at its arguments running this block throws this exception and it says this object has no attribute to bytes this is right because this attribute is coming with numpy that's why i'm going to import numpy dependency import numpy as mp 
and here I'm going to convert embeddings to NumPy array first. Finally, after all these for loops, we have to commit connection dot commit. Now let's check our data in SQLite directly. I'm going to perform select all from identities. As you can see, all my data is available here. Similarly, if I check the embedding table, I'm going to have all values and each dimension value is stored as a row. Now I'm going to search an identity which is not available in my database, but I'm going to search its identity. Firstly, I'm going to set the target path and it's going to be target.jpg in my desktop. I'm going to show what is it. Thereafter, I'm going to import OpenStb library and also matplotlib. matplotlib pyplot as plt. Here, I'm going to create target image. It's going to be OpenStb's inbred function and I'm going to set target path as input. Thereafter, I will plot this with matplotlib plt.imshow and let's show target image. This is the target image. It's in blue because OpenCV reads an image in the inverse direction of red, green, blue. I can handle this as this is my target image and this image is not available in the deep faces unit test items. But still, this is Angenojuli and I have some items of Angenojuli in my database. I'm going to use represent function again to represent that target image as vector embedding. Here image path is going to be target path. And I know there's just one face in this given image. That's why I'm going to access its zero index value get its embedding. I have the embedding of this target image and I'm going to query this embedding in my identities database and I'm going to find the similar items. I'm going to build a for loop here for value in embedding and my target statement is going to be select. Firstly, I need the ID of this iteration. That's why I'm going to use enumerate here and this is going to return ID. We use dimension number alias for this and value is going to be value. Thereafter, I'm going to store all these statements in target statements. And I am going to show this to you. I'm going to use union all between all these statements. For example, this is the first statement. This adds union all. And thereafter, second statement is coming. This is my final target statement. I'm going to use this target statement final later. Now I'm going to write a generic select statement and basically let's join our two main tables identities. For example, select everything from identities left join. My second table is going to be embedding and on identities.id is equal to embeddings face ID. I need to perform this. This is going to be huge statement. Cursor dot execute. This is going to return the result. This this is not showing anything. That's why I'm going to build a for loop for result and results. And let's print it. You can see the result of my query here. It's very huge because I'm going to update this statement now. After this join, I'm going to add another left join. Left join to my target statement final. And this is going to be merged with the embedding dot dimension number field. This is going to equal to if I say target to this target dot dimension number. Instead of returning everything, I'm going to return identities which name firstly embedding tables value as source and target here tables. By the way, I forgot to add f here target tables value as target. Thereafter, I'm going to write another select here. Let's say select everything from move all this query into this block. This becomes complex. That's why I want to run this to see is there any exception. As you can see, for example, image 22.jpg has this value in some of its dimension and same dimension number and the target statement has this value. I have many lines for this image22.jpg, so I'm going to add group by 
clause here. You may remember to calculate the Euclidean distance, you need to find the difference of this source and target. Thereafter, you need to multiply it to itself. In other words, I'm going to use Mitch name here, but here I'm going to use source minus target times source minus target. Let's run this statement again. As you can see, I have a calculation, but still image 22 has many rows. That's why I'm going to write another select here. Select everything from move this block into this new select. And here I'm going to use image name. And if I give alias as value for this, I'm going to find the sum of values. But after this from part, I'm going to use group by image name. Let's give it alias distance squared. So as you can see, I just have one row for an image. Now here, if you use SQRT, we are going to have the Euclidean distance directly. In the face, if you use FaceNet facial recognition model and Euclidean distance as distance metric, you should use the threshold as 10. In other words, if the Euclidean distance is less than the value of 10, then they are same person. If it's greater than the 10, then they are different persons. So I'm going to check this here with adding another select. Select everything from move all this block into this new select and here where distance is less than threshold 10. Let's run this again. I have just these items. Let's order them also after where close at order by distance. These are the same identities and the most similar one is image 6.jpg. Let's plot them all here instead of result. I'm going to get the image name and distance because this is returning a tuple. Right, image name and distance again. Drafter, I'm going to read the image as opencv.imread and use image net name and plot it. plt.imshow use image and convert it to red, green, blue. But I have to use matplotlib's show command here. Otherwise, if you use imshow in a for loop, then it's going to show the last one. It's the most similar one. Second most similar one, third most similar one, fourth most similar one, fifth not most similar one, next one, next one. As you can see, all these items are Angelo Julie's images, and my target image was Angelo Julie again. In this video, we focused on how to perform exact nearest neighbor algorithm with SQLite database. But as I mentioned, this can be adopted into any relational database such as Oracle, DB2, or MS SQL. If you do like this video, please like it and do not forget to subscribe to the channel also if you make comments then it will help me to reach more people i'd be appreciate in that case thank you all for watching and see you next time